Christian Cullen, Izzy, Mills, the fact, Ben Smith, guys who want to bring the ball back, threaten the defensive line, change the kicking tactics of the opposition. It seemed as though we have been in that mindset of this dual playmaker moving Bowden Barrett to the back. I look at Will Jordan and we give him the responsibility. It's time to give these young guys a go because we are running out of time. Well, the first decision we need to make is whether we're going to play guys out of position or go back to specialists. First decision, because I think a few years ago, and you were probably one of the first, is he that, oh, he's a fullback, oh, no, we're going to put him on the wing, and, you know, there was a bit of that going on, and then the last few years, the back three have been doing that. Was, yeah, but I think, centre, you know, but I think, I think Mills is a little bit different, because the Havili thing is, you know, Mills probably went to centre, that, that's a bit different for me, but the back three mm. is another, like, I think Havili should just stay there now. I think he's just good there, and if I was home, I'm saying, look, I'm not going back there. And same with Mills, right? Probably did a little bit in the end, but the back three lately we've just been... So who do we put on the wings, right? Do you want specialists? Or do you want to play guys out of position because you think they're better than the current specialists? Oh, we've got, I think we've gone around in a circle. Like the All Blacks, they've gone to the playmaker. You look at the type, both times World Cups have been successful. They've had out-and-out fullbacks, they've had out-and-out wingers playing in those positions, and they're trying to say they need a playmaker. Those fullbacks, you can't tell me D-Mac or, or Geordie Barrett or Will Jordan's not a playmaker. Those boys are playmaker. You get the ball in their hands, something's going to happen. So we've got to get rid of that dual playmaker. Yeah, well, is that a mindset, though? That's, is, that just, is that just a word that's coming out? Well, they've said it, of... and they've got to, they've got to you know, kind of make it look like they're going to do it. I mean, you know? for you, who is your who is your fullback right now in terms of... Because if you make that selection, it affects everything else you do, you know? Absolutely. It's the same at first Absolutely. five in the midfield. I mean, is David Harvelli that standout midfielder which forces you to maybe rethink how you play? Yeah, I think... Harvelli is a, a midfielder now. Like I, I definitely think his skill set is, is amazing and what he what he can do. I, why he's, he's a midfielder now? I think he needs to grow in that position and, and grow in terms of the f the physical nature of it. Because when you're at the back, you don't make those sort of decisions based on who's beside you and, and how physical it does get. That was what I was saying to you on Saturday night that I'd love to see him grow in that department. You know, be able to sit some on their butt when they sort of run down his channel. So I think he's got the, he's got a beautiful uh, skill set there. So. Um, you know, for him to get that mindset now and change that, I think he's he's our he's, he's our second five. So yeah. To the to the back, I think it's got to be to your point, J.K. That, that that you have to pick who they are in terms of the, an out and out. And when I say out and out, is it a Will Jordan? Perhaps at, at the moment, I think they need a, a, a an all round skill set. You just can't be because what, why I'm still a little bit hesitant about it is because you know what happens when teams don't kick to Will Jordan. You know, he's the best at bringing it back. But it's the, the other side of things, about being all-rounded. Can he take high balls? Yeah. You know, at the moment, D-Mac, you know, for a small man, he's, he's, he's awesome at it. So I think if it's you're going to put him at yeah. fullback, set him at fullback there so then he can grow other parts of, that, of, of his game to, to actually become the best in the world at that position. And as is Geordie Barrett, though, very, very good in the air, is he? These are hard conversations <laughs> that need to be had. Like I say, this, yeah. the, the window of opportunity, it's probably now, and I just look at the way that we've had success in the past, and you, you say Mertz and Cully, um, yeah. uh, Carter and, and Muliaina, you think Carter and Smith, yeah. even you go back, uh, Spencer as well. The, this that combination yeah. to me, the balance between the two of them. But I, when I saw the development of Ma Nonu's game, it was when Ryan Crotty came to the fold and forced Ma to expand. All of a sudden, the passing came, mm. the kicking came, then all of a sudden, the effectiveness in the midfield. I just see that, from the Crusaders' point of view, the balance of him and, and Lester Whanganuka on the weekend. He's a beast. He's a beast. He is a beast. Yep. But all of a sudden, to me, that selection is going to be the toughest um, uh, challenge for the All Blacks this year about how much they look for here and now and how much they look at the future because they know what they've got. I think they know what they want too. You know, they, David Harvey, we spoke about him before. I think he's starting to realise now that's his position. His head, his head's telling him, "Yeah, I've got to play here." His body's telling him no because he's very sore and very, you know, a lot more contact there. So David Harvey is out and out the best. 12 going around in New Zealand at the moment. His distribution, his ability to be able to hit players everywhere. You saw on the weekend, he had the he, grabber kicks, kicks to the corners, so he's got all around game, and that's what the All Blacks need. Oh, I think you can't go too far past Geordie Barrett at fullback, just mm. because in a test match, very different, he's going to kick you a goal from 55. And I know D-Mac will hate me saying this, but I believe that we weren't as effective at the World Cup because D-Mac is the best impact player in the world without doubt. Now, if I'm a player and you guys would agree with me, you don't want to be known as that, but imagine him coming on late. He is going to punish people. And who was that before him? Bowden Barrett. Barrett. 
and it was Bowden Barrett it was the biggest impact. Where did that impact come from? It came from fullback and their ability to bring the ball back against the opposition. So we know it's congested on the outside. We're going to get Tabs now to look at a real position of great discussion in Tabs. The loose forward trio, which they are, there are three, but who are the standouts out of Super Rugby Aotearoa? Well, a couple of things. I've taken Himeno, the uh, the Japanese international out of, the, out, out of our numbers, because clearly he can't play for the All Blacks. And I've taken people who haven't played many minutes and players who, uh, who, who are injured. But what comes up... Hey, hey, the... hey. What do you mean? Where's Dalton Popoli'i here? <laughs> There's another page. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the, are the Crusaders guys on it as well. Aren't they? <laughs> we might not have time to get to that. <laughs> this is probably harder. I think the fullback one is a critical decision, but this loose forward trio, you guys can have a conversation if you think that these guys are, are all black international rugby ready, but the, the numbers are saying these guys are leading the way. Is this the group that's going to win a World Cup, and are these guys ready for international rugby? Absolutely, and I think, Tabs, thanks, because it, it, it's fascinating when you look at the numbers and you talk about how. Uh, Influential Dalton Papali'i has been for the Blues, <laughs> but in regards to that all round play. Well, three loose fours just won for the Crusaders and they weren't up there. Exactly, and it just shows you. Yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 the, that's, 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 that's exactly it. Yeah, the depth that we start talking about in those positions and looking at, at what you're looking for once they're going to come back to this fact of there's very limited time, is he? The fact you start looking at some of these guys who don't have a number of test matches on their belt. They're talking about 30 being the number you want to when you go to a World Cup. Where do you go to from here with some of these guys? Well, a guy like Billy Harmon. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful opportunity for him. He's been at the Crusaders. He's been stuck behind some great sevens. Goes down the Highlanders and actually stands out. So you know, awesome that we we'll be able to talk to a guy like Billy Harmon, who's worked hard. Um, you've just they've got to get opportunities, and then you've got to give them opportunities to get out there whenever that four weeks time when they get a test match. You know, next couple of weeks when they play Trans Tasman, we're going to see them developing. We're going to be playing Australia. The Blazers are coming up, so you know we're going to see how they go in, the, in these opposition games. I've Austin's got a question in, for yeah. you: Who's seven? And who's captain? Well, I think that's that. I think it's that's the exactly makeup. It. The well, makeup no Sam Kane, remember, no exactly. Sam Kane. But it's a makeup in, in terms of what they actually want their, their trio to do. This is what this is where the Lucys are a whole lot different. You have a fetcher, you know. I think a, a, all of them have got to have a fetching to some degree. You know, do, who's the big ball carrier? Yeah. So I think a lot of that has to do with the makeup of um, what, which guys are a line out a line out option. You know, I mean, when you have got locks that we have, you know, two metres tall. I mean, you, you might possibly only want one. So I think the makeup is very important in terms of their skill set and their and their strengths when you're looking at the loose the loose trio and when you're picking them. JK, I'm going to ask you this then: the fact that Every team has a plan A and a plan B. And a lot of your selections go on how you're going to play in plan A. How are we going to be that team that in two years' time is going to a Rugby World Cup with an advantage over the opposition? Are we going to do it with the fact we were a dominant performance up front? We are overpowering teams, which England and South Africa did? Or are we going to outskill, outpace, and then rely on the one performance we need? To, f to front up physically and outmuscle an opposition. Where does our success lie? Because you think about all the balance we've got, all the attacking weapons we seem mm. to have. Mm. What is our best, best tactical approach going forward? I think when we've lost World Cups, including the last one, we haven't got the mix right between youth and experience, and mm. we've hung on to some players a little bit too long. So I believe we need to take some risk at, at the risk of losing possibly a test match yeah. or two from now till then. We've got to start playing some of these guys. I'm pretty sure that the the wise, you know, the wise heads, Foxy and Fozzie of them, they, they they know what they want. But we've got to take some risk. If it's Harmon, if it's if it's Hoskins, we've got to get them out there because by the time we get to the World Cup, they need to have that 20, 25 Test matches. And they need to have won, lost a couple. Mm. You need that experience, I believe. And, and where does it leave a guy like Akira Ioane, uh, um, Izzy? The fact last year, an outstanding turnaround in his uh, career with the Blues, forces his way into the All Blacks through form and then maybe through no fault of his own, no opportunities, few opportunities for the Blues. Blues start not playing well, Tom Robinson comes back in. Is this the guy who can, some way, in the next five weeks, earn an opportunity again? Well, 100%. He's, I just hope he's, he's taken Kyle Sinclair's uh, you know, thoughts in, in this process. He's not just dropped his lip. He's working extremely hard. Because when, when the kid Yuani is fit and he's, and he's, and he's working his, his butt off, as JK would say, that's when he's the best. He's, he's, his, his ball and play, his, his repeated efforts, he's getting off the ground, he's tackling. You saw him in that last test, I think it was against Australia. He was showing absolute mongrel, so he was good.